Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais in Ontario, Canada, with another episode of The Yacking Show. This is the show that brings you expert guests to give you actionable business and ideas and tips to help you grow your business and improve your life. And today will be no exception. But first, let me introduce co-host Kathleen Beauvais from Waterloo, Ontario. Hi, Kathleen. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Peter. Thank you so much. And thank you for tuning into our show. Today, we have the great pleasure of welcoming Dee Bowden to the show. Hello, Dee. Welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, Kathleen. I'm great. Thanks. And hello, Peter. Hi, Hi, Dee. Dee is the founder of BCS Solutions. She's a cash flow specialist that helps small businesses and entrepreneurs with their accounts receivable. Today, uh, we will be yakking about how businesses can remain solvent by collecting on their outstanding invoices. This is a topic that is, uh, I'm sure, going to be of interest to many. So, But first, Dee, can you please tell us a little bit about your background and how what led you to embark on this particular career path? Great question, Kathleen. Usually, so, so what most people want to know is the what had happened was it's it's that it's the background story. So basically, it's like this. So about 18 years ago, I used to work for a small IT company outside of Boston, where I'm originally from. You both have worked in corporate. You know how it is. You usually, usually come aboard and they say, welcome aboard. Here's your cubicle, your office, I use your box. I jokingly say your plant. Well, in my case, they came aboard and they said, listen, we have a collections team. Uh, we've got about 100 people. And uh, we've got $8 million in outstanding receivables. And we have not, yeah, exactly. We've not been able to collect it. And I was like, y'all have how much? They're like $8 million. And I thought, I actually thought they were kidding. They're like, no, no, no. Seriously, here's the, here's the aging. Here's all of our accounts. $8 million is outstanding. And your, your resume says you know how to collect cash. So like, we need you to help us get this money. So I sat in my cubicle for a moment. And I started thinking about what I normally do, like problem solving. Okay, okay. What's the, what was the difficulty in terms of the people not being able to collect the money? And I realized that business to business collections is three things. It's problem solving, it's customer, I'm sorry, it's four things. It's problem solving, it's customer service, it's gratitude and relationship building, just like we're doing today. So back to the story. I get in my cubicle, I get my list of accounts, and then I get on the phone. I'm old school. And so I literally start getting on the phone, dialing for dollars, if you will, but in, not in the traditional collections way. It's more finding about finding out what happened to the invoices. And so- and one of one of the one of the companies said we changed our billing system, so that was the first thing of problem solving. They said we changed our billing system, so we and then we sent on an email and we notified all our customers. And I said you did. They're like yeah. I said well what happened was we didn't unfortunately the company I used to work for we didn't get that email, so we never knew. So they we the company kept submitting the invoices in the wrong in the wrong format. So once we got the email back, we changed it. It was really like we going from like Microsoft uh, Excel to say QuickBooks or whatever the system is. Mm -hmm. So. Got the email, went to the comptroller, and I said, "Well, here's two million dollars, two million dollars that we can collect if we can just reformat these invoices into the new system." And she was like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, "Absolutely." So in 60 days, I recovered six million dollars, and then wow. the unthinkable happens. This is a true story. It's actually in my book. And so after collecting six million dollars, now y'all, here's 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 a piece that you have to understand. I was a part-time collector. I worked Monday through Friday, four to eight. This wasn't even a full-time thing. It was a part-time job. But what it did do was put me on the path to success to what I do today. So after collecting that money, the CEO of the company says, listen, we're going to have a chat. Now, you both have worked in corporate. I don't know if you've ever had gone through a reduction in force or a layoff or those surprise things. Well, that was what happened to us. We all got called downstairs. I'm thinking we're going to get bonuses because, you know, <laughs> you know, sales and AR, we've recovered all this money. You know, sales has made great money. Yeah. AR has recovered money. And they're like, no, nah, we've made an executive decision. We're going to close the company and we're going to let all y'all go two months before Christmas. This is a true story. This is what happened to me. Yeah, yeah. So wow. once that once that happened and I recovered, you know, and I, I'm sure you both have had things in life and in business that have kind of jarred you. Well, this definitely jarred me because <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm a, I'm a part-time collector. I do my part on the team and recover this money. And then they say, thank you for the coins. We're out. But after that, I kept thinking, hmm, how many other small businesses have this same issue where they've got sales on the book, but the money is not in the bank. How many of them say, okay, oh, it's AR. Oh yeah, I have to make those phone calls. Oh, I have to do the things. And then, oh crap, I don't I don't want to call my customer. I don't want to jeopardize the relationship. Um, I don't know what to say. You know, I'm really good at sales. I'm not really good at collecting all the things. And so I started looking at this process and thought about, okay, how can we have this conversation? Because usually what I've noticed with small businesses, they tell you, they teach you a lot about sales, marketing, social media, 
um, basic accounting, but nobody talks about, well, what happens if, when you submit your invoice and you don't get paid? How do you do the problem solving? How do you do the customer service? How do you do the follow-up? How do you express gratitude when they finally pay you? And then how do you keep the relationship going? So a couple of years ago, during the pandemic, I was watching I was watching things happen on a global scale. So for example, I like theater. So I don't know if you both of you like theater, but I love theater. So when Broadway shut down, think about this. Mm -hmm. Broadway is a multi, multi-million dollar business, but every theater in New York City is its own business. And it mm -hmm. has contracts with vendors that were planning on selling Chotskis and t-shirts and all the things based on the number of shows. Right. When all of those shut down, all of those projected sales, all that, all that AR that they were expecting to receive was lost. And mm -hmm. I kept thinking, nobody's talking about this. And so that's how Collect the Cash got birthed because it was me wanting to talk to the small business owners and teach them that you have to do have to collect the cash because the sale is not complete until the money is actually in the bank. And that's how I got started. That's how you got started. Oh, well done. Well done. Yeah, good, good. So you've took <clears throat> excuse me, you've touched on it in, in what you've just said. But what's your assessment of the average business owner's management of their accounts receivables? <laughs> How much time do we have? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think their assessment is this. I think it's one of those things where they have it, they really have it on the back burner because mm -hmm. they're looking at the front end. I have to prospect for new leads. I have to get I have to get a new sale. I have to get through the sales process. And then it's like I have to deliver the product or the service. And they're not really thinking about, okay, after I do all that, who's billing? on my behalf and then who's collecting the cash. I God. think that they I think they neglect it because it's not it's not talked it's not talked about and connected to <clears> sales. <throat> I think, you know, sales is lauded and that's it's, it's a great thing and it should be, but I think it needs to be sales and AR. I personally believe that sales and AR go together. Mm -hmm. Just like the sales people get their commission, I feel like you know, AR needs to it needs to be getting their bonuses. And when 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 it's seen that the, the 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 health of your company is tied to sales and AR. I think that will be the change because right now it's always a it's always been on the front end, which is sales. It's never really been about AR until recently, and it's only it only becomes a really big thing when they look up and they go, "Ooh, I owed all this money, and oh, I I am and now I got to go now 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 they feel embarrassed because it's like mm -hmm. if I had been tracking it like I was supposed to." Even if the payment terms were net 30 or net 60, when it got to be 60 days past due, it would not be sliding it over into net 90 because mm -hmm. somebody would be on the phone doing follow-ups, doing calls like this, having a conversation to say, okay, where, what's the status of the invoices? Are there any issues that we need to course correct? Is, is something wrong? Is, is there something missing? Did we, did we not prepare the invoice properly? Um, did we forget the receiving report? Did we order 10 sets of sneakers and you only got eight? I understand you're not going to pay for them until you get everything corrected. I think it's that part, and it's and it's more considered the weeds, if you will, the mm -hmm. back office versus being being on the front end, which is sales. Yep. Yeah. And and so just to pick up on what you said earlier, your your own experience where a lot of the money outstanding was because the billing system changed, mm -hmm. and um, and and I know from personal experience that several businesses lose a lot of money because they don't recognize that exact fact that mm -hmm. the invoices. With the best will in the world, the invoice is just not getting to the right person in the mm -hmm. customer company who's going to write the check or, or do the transfer as it is now. And, yes. and that's that's easily fixable if you take the time to look at it, right? Exactly. It is. And I'm glad you so I'm so glad you said that, Peter, because I feel like this is this is that part of the conversation that most people don't like to have because mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. talking about systems. But here's the thing: business is a system. Absolutely. All of it is, all of it is a system, and AR is an important part of that system. But I think again, it gets neglected because it's it's a part that you know it's kind of seen, seen like okay, it's like it's like the bookkeeper, back office. Okay, it's not that important. But as a, as a business owner, when you're looking at you know your your number of sales and number of invoices and payments, you're like okay, I have the sales on the books, bill for it, but my cash my cash flow is impacted because my invoices haven't been paid. And then you then you're looking at the ripple effect, mm -hmm. not meeting payroll. Um, you're not able to do marketing. You're not able to expand all the things. And I'm like, okay, as a small business owner, I, my whole thing, my whole focus is to teach you how to win. And mm -hmm. if I teach you how to win to by tracking your payments, tracking your sales, getting getting ahead of problem solving, that's that's what the focus of, is what, of what I do is. Very good. Well, Kathleen, back to you. So do you were recognized as the best revenue recovery specialist for 2020 and 2021? Tell us about that. 
Sure thing. So there's a the magazine is called VIP Global, and they they select the the 50 most influential people in business. And it just so happened that um, one of my friends recommended me for this. She said, "Well, you know, you you recover lots of money." And I said, "Yeah, but I I you know I I'm, I'm a practitioner at heart, so I never saw it as a, as a big deal." She said, "No, D, you've recovered millions of dollars for government agencies and, and corporations, and you have a heart to teach small business owners how to do this." So. I was nominated up against you know some 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 significant people, but I won, and I was I was honored by that because it, here's the thing: what it what it also does is that it now puts me in a in a category of one, if you will, but it also allows other small business owners to say, okay, if I get stuck in this area, now there's an expert that I can actually go to, and we can talk about this, and I can actually train you, and so for you know for that and so much more, I'm grateful. Oh, mm. Well done. Wow. Good for you. Excellent. Very, oh, very you. good. Very good. So you've touched on this, but again, I think for our audience, it's a good one to look at. My my opinion again, and I, I, I think you sort of already mentioned this, is a lot of business owners have such a good, warm relationship with their customers that they don't want to risk upsetting that by pushing them for money. Yes. And I, I, I know equally as well, because at one time I used to deal with a lot of farmers, that many customers um, will have a lovely, warm relationship with their supplier, but will push them as far as they possibly can for free credit to finance their own businesses, right? Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. Um, how do you advise your clients to, to get over that without risking the relationship, but bringing the money in and, and to stop financing their customers? One of the first ways I recommend is this. I always tell them that is the day that your payment does, has not come through, either you or someone on your team needs to be on the phone. Yep. I just, I'm, I'm old school. I believe I, I, I joke. I tell them this way. I know y'all love to solve everything with 144 characters, but we always, sometimes you just can't. <laughs> <laughs> You know, because I listen, I understand you just want to text them and say, listen, pay me. But here's the thing. I, I tell them that part of the part of part of the relationship building is is to collect the cash. That's part of your part of your process. You're you you have to do that. And secondly, I also tell them this. It, when you're tracking, you have you know when the payments is coming are coming in. You have a schedule. Mm -hmm. the payment doesn't come in that day. Either you or someone on your team needs to be doing the needs to do the follow up. Number two, if the payments haven't come in, you have you have to get on the phone and find out why. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it could be a, it could be a simple thing because I deal in in contracts. A lot of times, there's, there's the, you know, the payment payment terms and conditions. So if the if the payment hasn't come through before you get on the phone, go back and check your contract. Did you prepare the proper invoice? Did you go to the right department? Did you supply the copies or whatever they needed? Um, was there any email exchange that happened that said, okay, you were supposed to address this and you didn't? Because before you get on the phone, you want to have done your due diligence and make sure you sure. have all the information you need correctly first. Then you're on the then you're it's basically you're on the phone. Hi, my name is Dee. May I speak to the person that counts payable, please? Hey Susie, hey, whatever, how are you doing? We're gonna have a conversation. And then I, I I'm basically calling about this account number. I'm calling about this invoice. I need to find out if there's anything that's gone wrong and then ask for information and then pause and let them tell me so that we can do a course correction because there's a there's a possibility that a mistake was made. And I think sure. what, what people have gotten away from is that nobody wants to take responsibility for the data entry error or whatever error there is. And then also, if the person on the phone tells you what's wrong, I believe in gratitude. Thank you for pointing <laughs> that out to me because number one, I would I would have not have been been aware of that. Number two, what I tell my I train my clients to do this: if someone tells you that there was, there was a mistake made, first of all, thank them. Number two, ask them to send you a copy of it and then set it up as a template so that going forward you can you won't keep you won't keep making the same mistake. And you actually have the a same pattern. mistake, sure. Yeah, have a pattern so you yep. can yep. So you can cross correct. Hmm. Yeah, but but it's far better to have that conversation if your terms are thirty days. It's way better to have that conversation just after thirty days than it is waiting for sixty, ninety, or one hundred twenty days, right? Absolutely. Because now everything has become compounded now, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So do you claim to have an 85% collection rate among all the industries in, in which you operate? Tell us how you're so successful compared to collection agencies. And well, it, why is a different personality too? Because AR can be, I would say, somewhat confrontational. It could be, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, first of all, uh, thank you, Kathleen, for that. Um, number one, I'm not a collection agency. Neither is my business. It's, it's revenue recovery specialist. I'm a consultant, mm -hmm. not, not, not a collection agency. That's one. Number two, the 85% collection rate is this. It's been because I have learned over, over many years of doing this work as a contract administrator who's dealt with invoicing and sales and payments is that it's not just collecting. It's not just dialing for dollars. 
It's the building the relationships. It's the problem solving. It's the, okay, what went wrong? And then how do we course correct? And I, I, I have a different approach. I'm coming from the what had happened was to how do we win. I'm coming with, with a solution. I'm not coming at just, I have to collect the money. I'm looking at, okay, if we've been, because I come from, from problem solving. So I'm always looking at if a mistake was made, how do we correct course correct that? Because I feel like part of how AR gets a bad rap is because like you said, Kathleen, everybody feels like it's very confrontational as opposed to how do we get to solutions? I'm all, my, I, the way I was trained to do this was that, we're, we're not just collecting the money. We're looking for solutions. The solution is the money that allows the business to keep being, be, sorry, keep being business in a business and being profitable. If I'm helping, mm -hmm. if I'm helping to collect the money to get, make sure that you're profitable, then I can't come at it as at confrontational. I have to come at it with solutions. Now, is it always like that? Absolutely not. That's why it's 85% and not hundred <laughs> percent. There's always, there's always a margin. But the point is, is that my approach is more, more relationship building and more, you know, correct collaboration. I mean, I know I have peers that, that, you know, they're, they're just straight, you know, old school AR where they get the aging, they're on the phone, they're just going hard. And I just, I, I learned doing that early on in my career that didn't work. And I realized that the way I was able to have the success was to build a relationship. And I also found out this because I'm a practitioner, because I, I do really do do this. I'm working with people that are still in the career or in the field. And it's like, okay, you're my peer. And I want you, mm -hmm. I want I want I want I want you to be recognized as the person that's helping me get this to resolution. So when I come back and acknowledge you and say thank you for taking my phone call, hey, processing the invoice or let you know doing elect fund, elect funds transfer, I'm telling you, I see you, I hear you, and I'm just on the opposite end of the phone. I'm still a practitioner at heart too. So I, I'm I'm mm -hmm. curious, D most of the collections that you 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 get. Is it because of misunderstandings or is there, you know, because I mean, 85% collection, right? That's pretty impressive. It okay. really is. Are you finding that it's it's just misunderstandings between, um, you know, the, 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 the company that's providing the service and the company that's received the service? Absolutely. So there, there's really? misunderstandings. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's misunderstandings, number one. Number two. You, most people are very excited to get their contract and they're very excited to get to work. They're not, they're not reading all the fine print. And when it says, okay, you need so many copies of an invoice or so many, you know, receiving reports or whatever, whatever the information is, a lot of people are, a lot of people miss that part. And so mm -hmm. what happens is those steps get missed and it's not like, oh, I didn't, and they'll, I can't tell you how many people have said, oh, I didn't read that part. You got to learn how to read that part. <laughs> oh, <interesting. laughs> and I'm going to jump in here. Wait. The, the advantage of your way of building relationship with your customer means that you'll know when they have a valid reason for being slow on payment. For instance, you could have a really good customer who has a good track record of paying on time and unbeknown to you as the business owner, mm -hmm. they've had a major problem, be it a flood of their factory or a major theft and they're waiting for insurance claim to pay out. And mm -hmm. if you have the good relationship, you pick that up and you can say, well, I can make an exception and you retain a valuable customer instead of just getting all heavy with them and saying, I don't care what's happening to you, you've got to pay. And that's yeah. important in business too, right? Absolutely. So, and, 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 and another thing too is, you know, Peter, I'm so glad you said that because one of the things I, I happen to believe this, and I know this to be true, life happens to all of us. If mm -hmm. you're dealing with private, you're dealing with private contractors and subcontractors. The prime, the prime can't pay the sub until this until the prime gets paid from its corporate client. So that it, it that's there. So that's one relationship. Number two, I believe that and you can fix this and say, um, okay, you can't pay me the whole invoice today. What can you do? I say I teach my customers yep. don't, don't mess up everything. Don't mess up everything. I mean, you don't want to lose the client over all, your customer over a lot of money. Ask them if they could do a partial payment. You can do a quick email an adjustment and say, okay, we agreed on this. The payment was going to be sent, let's say $10,000. You don't have $10,000 because mm -hmm. you obviously haven't gotten paid. What can we do? Can we make an agreement? And, and you document it and say, okay, let's do this. You owed me this. I'll take a partial payment today. And you can do a, a payment schedule and say, okay, you're going to pay me mm -hmm. this today. And you wait for it to come through and you document the other dates. And then obviously the goal is, is, to, is to do the follow-up to make sure the payments are coming through and you want to make sure that you do that. But here's the thing. I I, I know I'm painting a very general, broad ex explanation for this. There's always exceptions to every rule. Has it always been this easy for me? Sure. Absolutely not. I mean, I deal with government agencies, so I, I'm talking about you know oh. multiple layers of people and multiple layers of, of divisions and multiple layers of, yeah. of tons of people from the finance side to the IT side to the contracting officer, all the things. But what I have learned is that sometimes you have to have 
First of all, you gotta have faith. <laughs> you gotta have faith in yourself and faith that you could actually collect this money. Secondly, you gotta be persistent and have perseverance. This is this is a long term game. You know, uh, obviously, mm -hmm. it, you know, it would be easier if everything was quickly done through PayPal or Square or Stripe. It's not always like that. Even if you do use those systems, if something's go something goes left in PayPal. You've got to do a file a claim, then you've got to ask all the questions and all the things. I'm trying to teach people that collective cash is is problem solving at its at its at its at its base at its base. And then what else do you need to do? Of course, you need to have a tracking system. Of course, you need to know your day sale outstanding. Of course, you need to know you know how to prepare a proper invoice and then how to collect it and how to track it and all the things. But above all else, you're in business to to solve a problem, but you're also in business to build relationships. And I feel like the more the better you get at building yeah. relationships, the better you are at collecting your cash. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm going to ask you one that, that's a little off. It's not really off topic, but it's slightly different. Uh, a number of small businesses, because they have trouble in collecting cash, use a I'm using the British term. I don't know what you call it in in, in the states. A factoring agent. So. Mm -hmm you go to a sort of finance house and you say, there's my invoices and they pay you at a discount and, and it's their problem to collect the cash from your customers, right? And uh, I know a lot of businesses use that because they don't have the manpower to chase up payments for what, and they don't like it. Is that a viable option for a small business or do you think it's too expensive for many? What's your thoughts on that? Um, I'll be honest. I haven't dealt a lot with factoring, so it's going to be hard for me to actually answer. Mm -hmm. I, because okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a practitioner, so I'm, I'm always going to tell you to go to, to go figure out how to get the money sure. versus doing that. Now, is it an option that you that you can use? I'm sure you can, but I don't want to speak speak on it when I really don't have experience okay. in that area. Isn't sure. that the same it, as collection agency, Peter? No, no. Collection agency is when you run into a problem and you can't get any payment. Factoring is is a routine thing. My brother did it in the UK because he was just not able to spend time and some of his customers were slow. So you discount your invoice by a varying percentage depending on the risk of your customer and you get paid immediately. Sort of as you, as you do the invoice, you'll get paid within a day or two and then they take 30 or 60 oh. days to collect from the customer. But there's a penalty because you're, you're, you're getting a, having to accept a big discount on the invoice. But it's an option for some people. It's an, a, it's a form of financing as well. Now, I just wondered if you had experience on that. Kathleen, back to you. Um, tell us about your book, Collect the Cash. Yes, <laughs> let's hear about sure. the book. Sure thing. So uh, during the pandemic, um, my book coach was doing a, a live webinar. And she kept saying, you can write a book in 90 days or less. And I was like, mm, a little skeptical. I'm like, nah, I don't think so. And she's like, no, I'm serious. You can really write a book in 90 days or less. But what she was really saying was you can have the idea for the book in 90 days or less. And obviously there's, there's, a, there's a longer process. So I shared the story we started this conversation with. I told her about, you know, working in, for the small IT company and what I did. And she said, D, you're, you're, we're your why. We're a small business owner and we don't always have, you know, the, the, the scripts of what do we need to say? How do we handle this? If so if we don't know how to prepare a proper invoice. And she said, would you do us a favor and, and teach us how to do this? And so, you know, we went back and forth. We played double dutch. I don't know if you know how to do jump rope, but we we, we did a little double dutch. And so she won. And so <laughs> Collected Cash collected cash is my story. It's about basically what happened to me. And then it's also about the mindset you need to have about collections, because I think people see collections as very adversarial. And I think you need to see it as a part of a part of how you do business. You, you have a sale and a contract and invoicing and, and payments. So uh, one of the things in the in the book, I talk about the collection zone. I, know, I don't know if either of you are sports fans, but I talk about getting into the collection zone. There's the pregame, which is likely mm -hmm. your mindset work you do before then, knowing if you have to make make a bunch of phone calls on this day to these particular customers. Some of them are very um, fun, but some of them are a little more challenging. How do, you, how do you get yourself prepared to make those calls? Then there's game day. There's the day you have to get on the phone. You just, you literally are, you're, you're getting on the phone. You're doing the four things, and then your your expectation is that at the end of the day you're going to collect your payments. And then there's post game, which is basically celebration. I believe in celebrating. I believe when you get paid the first invoice, the last invoice, and all in between, you get to celebrate. People are like, <laughs> "Are you serious?" I'm like, "Absolutely," because here's the thing: it's no to me because because the way I see collections is, is, is just like I see it on the front end for sales. When when the sales gentlemen, when the sales teams get their get their wins, they celebrate. They celebrate if they mm -hmm. if they get through yeah. the, the first phone call. If they know they're about to close that sale, they're already seeing themselves as being victorious and getting that sale. I see, see collections; it's the same way. You got to do pregame, game day, and post game, and celebrate that win, whether it's a dollar or millions of dollars or all in between. It's a mindset shift, and I think the more that we can see it as a mindset shift, shift versus just I'm just down for dollars. That's the difference, and that's what make, that's what makes that's what collective cash is all about. 
Wonderful. Thank you. And, and how, do people, how do people uh, get that book? Please visit www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. That's www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. It'd be my honor to actually sign it and send it to you. Oh, excellent. Very good. Very good. So <clears throat> I've got a, I've got my burning question. I'll ask all successful business owners in a moment. But before I do, we've got a couple of minutes in hand. Um, do you, do you, do you think that most small business owners, small to medium business owners, really understand the importance of watching their cash flow? And and I'm talking in particular where we are right now with recession looming and uh, the cost of of credit getting going up. Do you think enough of them understand the implications of not managing their cash flow? It's, I, I have serious concerns. What's your thoughts? I think they do and they don't. I think what it is is that for some of them, for them, some of them that, that actually are tracking what's going on, they are, they're already starting to see, oh, I've got I've got some money that's outstanding. Before this, before this snowballs, let me get mm -hmm. ahead of it. You've got some that they're 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 kind of in the business and not on the business, meaning mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're they're the practitioner. So they're just looking. Okay, I've got to just you know deliver my product, deliver my service, start prospecting, you know, figure out my next revenue generating activity so I can get my next client. And they're not thinking about it. But I think what's what's going to happen is that the more that this conversation comes up, it's going to be like, oh, as a part of as a part of being a, a, a successful business owner, I need to know all the things. And all the things doesn't mean that you are the person that's doing all the things, but you need to know, you know, what's the state of your account. And mm -hmm. that's where that's that's your that's where your 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 CFO or your CPA or your bookkeeper is saying, listen, we need to have a meeting. We need to talk about this. You know, we've you've got fifty thousand dollars and that's outstanding in cash. How are we going to handle this? Because what we don't want to happen is that we're, you know, we could get we could get this money and we could actually start to plan ahead versus Oh well, let me go do the next thing, and, and I feel like as 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 soon as they realize that this this could potentially be a problem, I feel like I feel like like I feel like this. I think since COVID, I think there's been a shift in managing cash flow better. I think COVID was like kind of the wake up call mm -hmm. when, mm -hmm. when you saw that when you saw the small yep. businesses having sure. to go get the loans, and a lot of them going out of business. I mean, I use Broadway as a as a as an example, but I'm just saying whether it was sure. Broadway or sports or the small business owners, the restaurants, etc. I think what COVID did was wake people up, especially in small business, to say, listen, you have to, you have to see, you can't, you don't necessarily see yourself as a small business, but you have to see yourself as a business, period. Mind shift, mm -hmm. shift. And then secondly, how do you make sure that you are on top of everything that affects your business, especially your cash flow? And especially if you have a small team of people and if they're they're expecting you to manage your cash flow because they're expecting to get paid at the That's end right. of the day. That's the right. Day. Yeah. So. And unfortunately, when when Things get tough. Several businesses put a lot of effort into increasing sales and thereby increasing their costs, uh, and they end up in a very quickly in a worse position than if they'd concentrated on bringing in their outstandings, right? So, exactly, absolutely. The double edged sword. So, here's the burning question that we ask all our successful business owners. Um, D, in your experience with all the people you've dealt with over your, your career, is there a ha one habit or mindset or characteristic that differentiates those who become successful? And I mean successful in a broader sense than just making money to those that never really do well and remain average. Is there one thing or is it more complicated? Uh, first of all, great question, Peter. I think the, the first way to become successful is you have to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. Just like you have books behind you, I have books behind me. Yeah. I, I, lo I love to read. Um, I think that the way you become successful is that you invest in yourself. I think number two, you have to stay open to to new things. Yep. Um, if you, I mean, even though I joked, I joke constantly about being old school. I am old school, but I still make sure that I'm staying up with you know technology and all the things. Three, I think you have to realize that your your success is is long term. It isn't it isn't like we just see on on these social media streets where you're, you're just seeing something on Instagram or something on LinkedIn. Oh my gosh, she's successful. Not knowing the not knowing the backstory because most sure. of us who who, who have successful, whether it's in business or in life, there's always a story. We didn't, mm -hmm. most of us did not wake up and we were just successful. Most of us have gone to school. We've, we've done the school of hard knocks. We've made mistakes. Um, we've gone back to school. We've gotten advanced degrees. You know, we've, we've been, you know, we've been mentored. We've had coaches. We've had all the things. I think, I think when you, you have to have a vision for you. I said, I'll say it to you this way. You have to have a framework. My framework is this. You have to decide, commit, focus, and succeed. I'll say it again. You have to decide, commit focus, and the last thing is succeed. Nothing in life or in business happens until you make a decision. Then you have to mm -hmm. focus on your decision. You have to see yourself being successful. You have to have a vision. And so when I was talking earlier about the collection zone, it's the collection zone is decision, decide, commit, yep. focus, and succeed. 
everything in life comes through is is basically in some in some sort of framework and it's how mm -hmm. you work your framework that determines your success wow thank you for that excellent very good Absolutely. answer thank you d yes. thank you're you welcome. d well welcome. d how do people contact you oh sure first of all again kathleen and Peter, thank you so much for this opportunity so Please do this. You're if you're, you're interested in getting the book, please visit www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. That's www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. And oh, I forgot book. to tell you all, I have a free gift for your listening audience. It's actually called The Five, the five Tips to Collect the Cash. If you go to bit.ly forward slash collect the tip, I'm sorry, collect the cash five tips. So it's bit.ly forward slash collect the cash five tips. And it gives you it gives you five additional tips to collect the cash as a small business owner. And you'll learn um, about setting goals. Why why is it so important to track your payments? Learn learn how to confidently ask for your payments. Those things are very important. Um, also, I'm, of course, I'm on I'm on social media. I'm on LinkedIn for sure at D Bowden, and our Instagram is at D Collects. But again, the book is www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. Fantastic. Wonderful. And for our audio listeners, all of that will be in the description, so you're not going to lose out on that. Back Excellent. to you, Kathleen. Thank you so much, Dee. And again, thank you. thank you all so very much for tuning into our show. If anyone is interested in being a guest on our show, please go to theyackingshow.com. All you need to do is click on the contacts tab where you will find a short application form. We'd love to hear from you. And please, if you have any topics that are of interest and you'd like us to interview somebody, please let us know. We have access to so many wonderful experts on this show. So until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.